Uh, my name is Matthew, and I will be your host for the next 30 minutes or so. And we will be talking about the remote proc and RP message uh, Linux kernel uh, subsystems. Um, so before going any further, uh, I would like to mention that all of the work that will be presented here, um, some of it is done by Linero, but most of it is work that has happened in the open app community and everything that we do here at Linero with regards to uh, RP message and remote proc are uh, in partnership with the open app community. So it's not two distinct project, it's really one big project and I am doing the update on uh, those subsystems. So we'll start with uh, what happened over the last uh, 10 to 12 months from there, we'll talk about the things that are currently uh, being discussed on the mailing list and in the forum. Uh, we'll also uh, view a little bit of the challenges that we are currently facing. Uh, all that should hopefully take us about, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes at the very most. And from there, we'll simply open the floor uh, for questions and comments. Uh, you can also interrupt me whenever you want, so just raise your hand and Randy will unmute you, or you can wait at the end. Uh, it's all good with me. So let's get going. Uh, what has happened over the last little while? Uh, we have seen a lot of work in the platform drivers uh, on the mailing list. So Ingenic was there. Uh, TI has gained support for a number of their um, their solutions and also has increased support for on the, on the old map realm. Uh, there is currently patch set that have been submitted from uh, MediaTek. We also have uh, NXP in the mix that are um, uh, that have patches to support uh, their platform again. So there's a fair amount of work in uh, trying to get uh, new devices supported upstream. We've also gained support for ELF 64 images. So uh, that does not mean that we support 64-bit remote processor. That's a completely different story. Um, so some, some people have discussed doing that, but we haven't seen people coming with uh, patches to, um, to move into that direction. But uh, as of a few months ago, ELF 64 images are supported and that will be handled properly by the framework. Um, we have also seen the introduction of a character device for remote processor. Uh, so this is specifically handy for synchronization with the application side and the remote processor. So if the application side crashes, it is possible to tune the framework to automatically shut down or restart the application, the, uh, the remote processor. So that way we don't have one side waiting on the other and um, there's no problem occurring from that situation. It's also possible to start and stop a remote processor. So simply having greater, greater control in that area from uh, the application space. So moving forward, uh, some of the people in Qualcomm have uh, introduced support for um, memory if efficient core dumps. So if you are working in an environment where memory is limited, uh, this feature allows to read a partial or part of the image of a core dump as memory uh, is available on the application side rather than simply taking the whole core dump image from the remote processor into um, user space on the application processor and using all sorts of memory that could be utilized uh, by other things. So uh, this is also something that came in. Um, we have extended the name service, the RP message name service. So nowadays uh, it is possible to um, append to the string that is bounded by the driver and that simply helps when you have multiple instances of the same service it makes it very easy to um, see which service has been instantiated which service you're talking to 
and all of that without having to recompile the driver um, in the kernel itself. Uh, also interesting to talk about attaching to a remote processor. So we have seen scenarios where um, the remote processor has been started by an external entity. So that might be a bootloader or the secure world. Uh, in those cases, when the kernel does boot, when the application does start up, um, the application or the, the, um, the remote proc core will simply synchronize or connect with a remote processor rather than uh, switching it on and doing all of the, the necessary setup that would normally happen should the um, application processor start or be the manager of the life cycle. So uh, this is interesting for environments, uh, industrial environments or the automotive world where either the remote processor needs to provide a service at initialization time very quickly or simply that sensors have to be uh, managed and um, responded to in a timely manner where uh, the application processor is simply not able to do something like that. Um, so this is sort of the work that has happened. Uh, there is a lot more, so, uh, but this is, these are the main points. If we're talking about what has happened in the spring and over the summer, um, there has been a fair amount of effort to make the RP message namespace that we just talked about into its own module. Uh, so this is very interesting uh, for two, um, uh, on two fronts. First, it would decouple uh, the current implementation from the Vert.io that the protocol is currently working on top of. So this is the first part of that work. And the second part is to simply make uh, namespace available to other areas of the kernel, uh, simply because it's quite handy in terms of out-of-band communication and instantiation of services. Um, so, uh, also seen um, the multiplexing of hardware protocols over uh, RP message. So, this is quite useful when we are talking about systems where we cannot have more than one um, channel, albeit Vertio or anything else, uh, any kind of message passing mechanism. So, a system where there can only be one channel of communication between an application processor and a remote processor, it is interesting to uh, bundle UART, SPI, or I2C protocols, or anything you want for that matter, onto RP message. So there is work in that area that is currently happening. Um, also, uh, part of the bundle is the discovery of uh, Vertio devices through the device through. So this is interesting in situations where we do not want to be bounded by the resource table uh, that is embedded in the remote processor image. It introduces a lot of flexibility and uh, vendors don't have to juggle with different firmware image based on the services that they want to instantiate. Uh, so there have been patches in that area, um, more will come and we expect that there's a fair amount of work that will be happening happening there. Um, quite lately, actually, recently, we have worked on making uh, RP message name service available to uh, another subsystem, so the virtualization uh, world, so vhost uh, being able to use that functionality in order to advertise the service they uh, support to their guests. So work in that area is uh, uh, currently going on. There are some active conversation and um, they are different. There's actually quite a lot of things to discuss uh, for something that was at first thought to be uh, more simple. So just want to make sure that things do not break or that we don't bind ourselves when it is time to uh, enhance the subsystem or move forward with different features. Um, there's also a patch set that completes the support for offloading the lifecycle uh, from the remote proc core to a different entity. 
So uh, earlier um, in the um, the spring, we have seen the introduction of the Connect feature. So as I uh, talked about, Dispatch is about uh, completing that work. So what do we do when uh, the life cycle uh, is out of the uh, application processor realm? Uh, so what do we do when we want to shut down the remote processor or the remote processor crashes? So there are things to different scenarios to take to take into account and this is this batch that is aiming to address uh, those scenarios. Last but not least, uh, we are seeing the introduction of multi-core remote processors. Uh, up to now, uh, the remote processors that uh, the framework was supporting was single core. Um, but nowadays, with the introduction of multi-core, uh, we would like to have bindings that are as generic as possible. And the definition of those binding is going through uh, the system device tree project. So this is done in conjunction with that project. Um, so this takes time. We want to make sure that things are done right. Uh, the flip side of the coin is that for now, uh, multi-core remote processors cannot be uh, merge uh, for as long as the bindings are not defined and um, have become a little more stable. So this is the ongoing work that we have been concentrating on. There's also a myriad of, of work that is submitted to enhance uh, the remote proc core itself. Um, a lot of platforms, uh, a lot of those are to uh, support scenarios that vendors are encountering uh, in order to support different aspects or requirements from vendors. Um, so there's a fair amount of those uh, being submitted as well on the mailing list. So this brings to the challenges that we are currently facing. Uh, and I'd say that our first uh, number one challenge is definitely keeping up with that traffic on the Linux remote proc mailing list. Um, there's a lot of things that people have come up with uh, um, internally within their company, uh, things that have been uh, deemed quite useful by customers, and uh, all of that is now um, hopefully being uh, submitted, or people are hoping to see that introduced in the remote proc core. Um, a lot of people have thought about the same thing, so kind of the same or similar features are being submitted. And it's um, one of the, the most challenging tasks is to see what has been um, thought about or implemented in different organization, how to make that generic enough so that one, people from different um, or from different scenarios can use it. And also that it is able to move forward with that in terms of expansion or enhancement. Um, we're also seeing the emergence of very complex patch sets, so things that are crossing multiple subsystem, uh, and it's the case with using RP message in the Virtio world. So um, these patches are emerging, and it demands from us that we understand what's happening in those situation, how it impacts the remote proc RP message subsystem, and see how uh, we can move forward with those. Uh, by being uh, backward compatible and also without uh, constraining us for future enhancements. Um, so this is pretty much what I had uh, in terms of overall uh, um, retrospective of what has happened. Uh, there's a lot of things happening uh, every day on the mailing list. Uh, there's a lot of conversation. People have different ideas. I say that this is very fruitful. Um, like I said at the beginning of the presentation, uh, this is all done in partnership with the OpenAmp community. Uh, and uh, on that, I, I encourage people to take part in the conversation on the mailing list, review patches, it would be very appreciated. Uh, we have a bi-weekly conference call where uh, there's a lot of things that are being discussed, a lot of things that are being ironed out. There's no need at all for any kind of membership. Uh, if you are interested in joining the conversation, uh, reach out to us and we'll give you the specifics of the calls and we would be very happy to have you. So this is what I had. 
uh, I suppose that night, now it is time for you guys to ask questions either on the material that was presented, anything that you might want to do, or anything that is happening on the mailing list with regards to remote proc or RP message. Um, so now would be the time. Okay, so I see a, uh, a question here regarding buffer management API. Uh, that question, which is about buffer management and is probably best answered by someone from the OpenAMP community, or uh, like I said, this is a perfect question for a call that we have bi-weekly. Um, does it define how to share buffer? Okay, all right. Um, so the, the buffer sharing that we have right now with the subsystem is only concerned with the passing of RP messages. Um, the other, or the, if, if there are more, uh, those would be uh, left to, um, uh, or is done on a per-platform basis. So uh, there's a question here on the channel that says, how is IOMMU cases supported? So the framework does support uh, IOMMU, and this is done, there are simply callbacks to set that up when the remote processor is started and stopped. So um, uh, it's very flexible and uh, is in use by a two or three platforms, and not, if I'm not mistaken. So all that is possible. It's, it's very uh, customer specific, application specific, or architecture specific, as I say, and all of that are callbacks that you are providing. So you are not constrained into a, a predefined pre cookie cutter uh, framework. So on current LTS 5.4, which is quite new, how is remote processor crash detected? So uh, this will usually happen um, there is a functionality in the framework to either do that via an interruption or um, so it's, it's basically a platform specific mechanism that ties into the framework that will generate the, um, the gathering or the generation of uh, a core dump on the remote proc um, core side. So uh, some people have a message passing, proprietary message passing interface. Some people will use a mailbox. Some people will use an interrupt. Again, this is quite uh, architecture specific. It's very flexible. Um, all you need to do is call the, uh, the entry point for the crash routine in the remote proc framework and uh, a core dump will be generated for you based on the, a, um, the portion of the um, the firmware image that you will have added to um, uh, to entries into the into the remote proc core. So does uh, RP message support multiple parallel endpoint invocation? So you can have as, as many vert IO uh, channel as you want to. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, when you are uh, in one vert IO channel, you can support as many uh, endpoint as you want. You might have a bandwidth problem at one point or another, and all of those will be um, there's there's no um, quality of service or there's no throttling. So all of those uh, requests will be served or received as they are uh, being submitted, basically. So yes, uh, RP message definitely support multiple, uh, well, it's not parallel, but multiple invocation uh, at the same time. In order to have parallel, you would have to have multiple uh, vertical channel or any kind of transport that you want to um, enact on your platform. Uh, can logs from the remote be seen via RP message? Well, you would have to, uh, there, there is a way to, uh, that would, there's multiple ways to do that. 
that depends on uh, how you want to uh, organize things on your platform. You can either open um, something in user space that will communicate with your remote processor via RP message. That is one way to do that. Uh, in fact, people have been doing that. Uh, there's simply no official driver to do that. Um, but there are patches to do just that, yes, on the mailing list. Or you could go your own way and, and implement, uh, you know, your own message uh, passing service directly in RP message. I don't see any reason not to do that. It might not be the cleanest way to do so. Um, but yeah, there are multiple ways to do that. And uh, I think that the easiest is definitely to use um, a user space uh, driver or, and simply uh, once a name service has been um, advertised and bounded with, uh, simply start communicating using that. That would be very easy. So um, there's a question about um, the relationship between ELF64 and 64-bit processor. So uh, you can easily have a 32-bit processor using an ELF64 image, right? That is not a problem at all. So this is what we have now. We, the framework support ELF32, ELS64, uh, and core dumps will be generated um, with ELF64 or ELF32. It really, uh, it's really uh, generic. So all you have to do is specify uh, um, into your platform driver, specify which kind of image that you are working with, and the framework will do the rest of the job for you. Uh, so that's just one side of uh, the equation. The other side is the processor, the remote processor that you are talking to. Uh, and right now, uh, there is no support for 64-bit. Uh, There's only support for 32-bit. Um, as I said, there have been conversation on, on how to do that. Some people have done that, but there are simply no uh, patches to support that at this time. How much of shared memory is typically required for VertIO? So this is a question I cannot answer. It is solely dependent on what you want to do with it and the amount of buffering that you want to have uh, between uh, your remote processor and your application processor. Um, based on the amount of traffic that you intend on, on having uh, go through uh, the pipe, um, whether you need some something more or less, that's that's really dependent on your application. So does that's a very good question. Does RP message support zero copy mechanism for large buffer? The answer is no. Um, we are trying. To, we we have talked about doing that, um, but it simply have not bubbled to the top of the list um, so far. And Bill has uh, replied or supplemented. Uh, my my answer by saying that OpenAMP uh, does support uh, lib zero copy, or sorry, that it is currently in progress. And I think we have, let me see, I think we have people from the OpenAMP community. Uh, Ed is on there, and um, uh, if Ed wants to, Ed and Arno are there too, so these they are the maintainer of the, uh, the OpenAMP uh, code base, so uh, if they want to uh, add any more to uh, my answer or builds, uh, Christine will simply, Christine or, or Randy will unmute you. I think Suman has just raised his, raised his hand as well. So um, can someone un, uh, unmute Suman? They should all be unmuted. Yeah, uh, lovely. Bill and Suman. Hey, uh, I, yeah, I just wanted to clarify on a couple of things that uh, to Matthew's answers. Um, one of the earliest questions was on debugfs logs. Um, so one thing Matthew missed out was uh, the remote proc framework has does provide something in debugfs through debugfs. So there is a regular file, but it's just a simply a circular buffer. Uh, it does not uh, have. Uh, so once it overflows, so then you do lose messages from the past. But in general, one of the earliest, quickest ways of debug is to use that to see if uh, anything is going on on the front. So we do have that. Uh, doing our RP message is also definitely a possibility, but it does uh, incur the uh, transport bandwidth. So it's up to uh, individual platforms choice uh, 
uh, whatever uh, Matthew was suggesting. So that's one thing. Or uh, regarding zero copy, um, so today in terms of buffer management, uh, one of the approaches that we use is like the heap management is kind of uh, outside the remote proc or RP message subsystems. So we kind of use the DMA buff heaps uh, moving towards that. Um, so as long as, uh, and you can always share pointers in the RP message buffers, but the transport itself is processor copy, but not zero copy. So there are, there are that, that's what uh, uh, Matthew meant, like in terms of the work, future work, if you want to truly support uh, zero copy messages, that's for the transport itself. Uh, but large buffers and big data buffers, you can always uh, share using an external allocator and some pointers or address built in as part of your message. Thank you. And I'm just looking at the clock. We're probably at a point where we could try and wrap up this session and continue the dialogue over in the Slack channel if we like. I'll put that uh, in the notes in the chat right now if anybody would like to jump there and continue the discussion. Yes, I'm already in the chat on, on the Slack channel. Uh, so if you are interested in continuing this, I will be available. Thank you very much, Matthew, and the group that helped respond as well. Thank you very much.